welcome to this uh, next uh, virtual series which is presented by abp uh, is called the pitch virtual brand pitch brand talk virtual series and uh, uh, in this series uh, we get you the thought leaders from various domains uh, to talk about various facets of what we are going through as brand heads as marketers when uh, as far as covid is uh, concerned and how it has impacted and changed the entire narrative of marketing brand building um, and and the like so with me today uh, is mr anush modar he is the executive director of bajaj electricals and the topic today is very interesting we're going to talk about the strategy to bounce back in the heart of customers something which is uh, we're at the fag end of uh, a certain kind of a lockdown in lockdown 4 and we are thinking that businesses would come back in some way in some form so we'll talk about what it means to win back customers in this situation so mr pradar welcome to the pitch uh, brand talk virtual series presented by abp uh, i want to begin by asking that we have almost in the 50th day how has it been uh, for you these 50 days it's been to confess it's been a trial by fire in every which way you know it's uh... all the usual playbooks all the learnings all your standard you know practices processes uh, structures delegation of you know authority nothing works you know every day you had to you know reinvent the wheel we look at everything that you were doing and look at it differently you know before i just go ahead rohel i had a uh, confession to make uh, you know since this is change for media and pitch and you know all the i guess there's a lot of uh, uh, brand and marketing experts out there so i'm not a qualified person to talk to everybody and the reason i say that is you know the tag that i always carry is that i'm a professional banya as so to speak i have not done an mba i'm not a marketer i've never learned marketing uh the way i look at all of these things is simply that you know you have a consumer and the way i look at this whole consumer and brand game is that you know what's the game you have humans and you have people out there okay and you have something to tell them how do you actually make an impact and how do you connect with these people and uh, just as a personal aside the analogy i draw is i have two teenage kids and if you can you know deal with teenage kids you know that's the biggest you know test of what you can do you have to understand their psyche what's going on in their head what is it that you want to tell them or get out of them and how do you make that message work to them so but coming back i think in a larger sense that's to me is how i look at brands consumers and all of this communication etc but like what is it that i want to tell them and how can i you know get through to them and connect with them so just in a very plain simple way i don't understand jargons i don't understand marketing i just look at people as people and what do i really have to tell them and finally since i'm a banya you know uh, marketers don't like business people sometimes the bean counters but i think it's important we look at the numbers at every point it has to always make sense so sense i'll just stop at that that's the confession i want to be sharing with great so so you're saying number crunching comes very naturally to to you and of course i think marketers learn a lot from the streets itself you know i think that's how it is uh my so we can begin my uh, the format is simple we are live on facebook twitter right. instagram youtube and we'll be taking questions in the last 15 minutes it's a 45 minute uh, session that we have so uh they can people can start uh, messaging us and we will post those questions my first question to you is that why we are nearing uh, a, a semblance of normalcy in, as far as businesses are concerned uh what would be the three big win back strategies that brands can look at in this phase to win back customers so before i talk about the three points or whatever that you know come to my mind uh, you know the most common phase being bandied about right now is the new normal right and everybody is talking about the new normal because they believe the old normal is dead you're never going back to what you thought was normal i think the world has changed and it has changed forever and you know the reason for that is you know people try to compare this to you know other things events that we've had uh, 9/11 or the 2008 you know uh, financial markets crisis or earthquakes or floods or wars across the world i think none of them match up to this for the simple reason that this has affected every single human in every single country every single business every single you know society right none of all these events that have happened in our lifetime had such a wide pervasive impact on every single person across you know, the world in that sense it is very different it is you know going to leave to my mind a deep impact on everybody else uh coming back to my analogy that i said earlier you know when we talk consumers who are we talking about these are people 
uh, you have to understand what is their psyche, what are they going through in this process right now, right? Uh, to my mind, they're no different from, take a child who is deeply scarred and confused by what's happening in what's, you know, the events of the last 50 days, right? And that child really doesn't know now what he wants. He had a set of uh, stable needs that he was used to going and getting fulfilled. And now suddenly his world has gone upside down. And now he's trying to figure out what of his needs, you know, he wants to go out and fulfill. What can he afford? And even before that, you know, he, before he can exercise those choices, I think he needs a level of reassurance and confidence. But he's lost a lot of confidence and he's really in a state of, you know, confusion right now. If you can understand that that's the psyche of consumers out there that you're talking to, and then start looking at, you know, to your question, the three steps that as brands we need to do. I think that's the starting point. You're dealing with a fractured, a confused, or a highly stressed, and you know, scarred uh, set of people out there right now. Uh, and therefore, as a brand coming back to, you know, three points, I think the first point really is you have to engage with these people. These are people with whom you have a relationship. You've been, you know, uh, selling to them or, you know, uh, fulfilling their needs for all this while. You have to engage with them and communicate with them. But, but not as a seller. You have to keep your instincts to sell aside and you just engage with them in an authentic and empathetic manner. manner. Just keep your relationship at the core of it. That as a brand, what is a relationship that you think you have and want to maintain with these consumers? And what does that mean in these times? How do you just reassure them in the current times that you are there for them and that relationship matters to them? Uh, and you know, in tough times, people who stand by you in any way or form of relationship, I think people tend to remember that. There are various examples of what we've done, but I'll save that for later. So that's point one. Stay engaged and communicate with them and in a manner that is authentic and empathetic. Number two, coming back to business, you have to adapt your product and your offering and be able to demonstrate that whatever you're offering to them, you are able to be responsive and able to address their concerns. Okay? Their needs would have changed because of the current you know, situation. Your standard product or solution offerings may not completely meet or match their needs. And therefore, how are you going to tailor that and adapt that to meet their renewed or differentiated needs? Not all of these needs may change. Some of these needs may change. Just two quick examples that I can think of. Uh, you know, I saw, I read a couple of days ago that Disneyland in Shanghai is reopened. Uh, they, the standard need was to you know entertain the kids, entertain the families, give them a great experience, right? And now you're dealing with a consumer who is you know shaken and scared to come back. So first thing they needed to do is reassure consumers and their families and parents with children that you, it's safe to come back to Disneyland. And it, without even getting into it, I can assure you they would have done the kind of communications, put in so many steps out there, etc., to assure them that you know this is safe to come back and we've got you covered. Once you address that, provided reassurance. Then you have to go back to the need that is not changed. The need that is not changed is to give the kid and the family a ride, give them a thrill, give them adventure, give them fun, give them entertainment. So don't throw the baby out of the bathwater. Give them reassurance, but come back to what your core focus is. So that's point two about adapting your product and offering to this new consumer, new requirement. And point three really is about you have to go to the consumer. He is scared. He's sitting at home. He doesn't know whether it's safe to come out. He's not sure whether he can touch you, feel you, pick up your product. You know, eat your food in a restaurant, etc. And you have to go out to him. I can again give you examples about, you know, uh, let's say, you know, and I will talk about our, our examples later. We've changed our go-to-market models. We were, you know, we were largely sold through general retail trade out there, but we're looking at omni-channel channel services right now. People can call us, book online, etc., and you'll have somebody come to your door and deliver your mixer or your fan or your light bulb to you at your home. I can get into details, but the point really is the consumer is not coming out and you have to go out to them. So, uh, consumers are facing another problem, which is the purchase sentiment is very low. And brands have to sell, they have to appeal to them in some way. So, first is changing the entire paradigm of perception. Uh, as a brand, uh, how are you, what, are, what steps are you taking to uh, alter that perception, make a very different positive perception. So people with whatever money they have in the phase of layoffs and pay cuts and everything else, they still go and go do that purchase. How are you trying to build that sentiment, that perception? So yeah, so you know, building that perception is really about you know connecting with his mind space right now, right, or his or her mind space right now, 
and you know building a narrative around that that connects your product or your offering in the brand to his current mind space uh, having said that you must always remember what your core purpose is you know what are you really offering what's the core purpose of your brand and product is if i take our ex you know examples whether we sell the appliances or fans or coolers etc that ain't going to change you know my fan and cooler is meant to cool his environment my you know mixer or grinder or kitchen appliance or cooker etc is meant to help him make, you know or her cook their food but how do i build a narrative around that that fits their current needs we've launched the summer fans and cooler range that you know uh, is anti germ and anti bacteria so what that does is cater to his or her elevated need of feeling safe and having a safe clean healthy environment around themselves and therefore our product of anti bacteria or anti germ fan or anti bacteria anti germ cooler gives him a sense of reassurance uh, if i look at our kitchen appliances you know i have to move my communication away from just the basic uh, fulfilling a functional requirement of you know making a toast or you know blending a masala or etc to giving him a sense of what has lockdown done for people it's brought families together it's made the men folk become part of uh, the kitchen duties it's allowed people to indulge in you know uh, baking or cooking as a hobby as a past time for family it's a you know lever for bonding between families so how do i change my narrative for my kitchen appliances to now tap into these new uh, you know you know thoughts or you know priorities that families or my consumers have discovered and use that as a bridge to connect to them and to yet you know repurpose you know our sale proposition of our kitchen gadgets i can give more examples let me give you one more example of a tougher sell than you know i would yet think a fan of kitchen appliances a fairly essential product right what consumers like you said you know if they're challenged right now either for economic reasons or simply because they don't want to you know, do things that they think are wasteful are going to be less and less likely to indulge in indulgences okay the most challenged sectors right now for you are hospitality hotels restaurants eating out travel right typically these were sold on the premise of guiltless indulgence guiltless consumption go out and have a good time indulge in luxury that narrative is not going to you know find great traction right now you will if i am a hotel or restaurant i need to change my narrative to say this is not about guiltless consumption or indulgence it's about mental well being it's about you coming in you know connecting with your spouse or taking a family out for an outing that they've been locked down for a few days so again you have to probably you know you can't shy away from the fact that your product to sell is a hotel or a travel or a meal or fancy meal but you cannot sell that in the same peg of indulgence and luxury and you know consumption you have to change the peg to being about well being bonding family whatever you want to make it around uh the last bit is really about these are kind of brand repositionings or narratives that one is looking at but you know there's this classical go to market and sales steps that you will take okay you will have to revisit your pricing strategies you will have to revisit your packaging strategies are people going to buy the big unit or the small unit uh, from our company we are re looking at all our sku's are people more likely to buy the expensive fan or the cheaper fan are they go going to go for the frills or are they going to go back to you know basics so you have to re look at all your sku's all your pricing your bundling this is a classical fmcg pricing go to market strategies or sales strategies to you know actually make the more likely product sell versus the less likely product sell in an environment like this i have a bunch of don'ts but maybe we can take that up later you know what you should not do really. uh so while you are saying that you are taking all all of all these steps are required to bring back that back that sentiment i also want to know that why you are reaching out to customers now and making all those attempts the tone the marketing tone also has to undergo a certain shift you know it cannot be first but it can't be purchased directly you know it can be very subtle and from your from your brand perspective this tonality how is this tonality being redefined in your case yes i think good question so you know i spoke about how our messaging or narrative is being redefined but that's the what you know the how is equally important as to how are you connecting with these people you know i already spoke about how you're trying to connect to a changed mindset or mind space of people out there and you know the need for you as a brand to just engage with them uh, i think the tone of that engagement needs to be one of empathy and needs to be authentic okay i think it's very easy to see through fake people it's very easy to see through a fake brand or fake you know commercial communication 
so in this situation, the first thing you have to do in your tone is, I think, be authentic and empathetic in what you're saying as a brand and respect your consumer for what you're telling them. And again, don't be in that sell mode. Don't try to you know, over commercialize what you're trying to say right now. Very often, you know, brands tend to put out a PSA or a public service announcement, or, you know, feel good message. And then they, you know, uh, spoil that completely by, you know, plugging their products so up, you know, in your face. And don't do it. You know, it's, it's a complete waste of opportunity. Resist the temptation to, you know, plug your product. People will connect with you simply because you said them something that they like. Okay. You don't have to hard sell that. Okay? Uh, I can talk about a couple of examples that we've done. Uh, you know, we rolled out an you know, online app for uh, recipes. You know, you just interact. It's an IBR based, WhatsApp based, and created a whole you know, body of recipes that people can interact with because they're sitting at home and cooking more. And therefore, you know, desserts, appetizer, main course, whatever else it is. And there's nothing, there's no Bajaj sell in that. I'm not plugging a product, etc. It's just something that you know, I think meets the needs. Uh, we put out a you know uh, a video on Mother's Day. It's simply you know saluting mothers and you know how you remember mothers in this lockdown you know phase, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You're not selling your products. Uh, point two really is even when you do all of these feel good things, the other extreme of that is people go so overboard with feel good that they forget actually they are a brand, right? You are a product. Uh, if I give you an example, you know the examples of you know families at home and they need advice. So why don't we give them advice about how to engage the kids, how to indulge in learning for the kids, how to you know play games with the kids, how do you, it's not my job. You know, there's a thousand and a hundred, you know, thousand blogs out there that is talking about the same stuff, right? If I was yet working in my previous organization and I will just, you know, plug their name and Nickelodeon was one of our, you know, brands and channels out there, then yes, I would, you know, talk about mother, child, child, keeping kids engaged because that fits into the brand. It's not the Bajaj brand space to talk about kids and mothers and, you know, what, how should kids be kept, you know, engaged in this period of time. But yes, as a brand, you know, I am in it for, uh, you know, people, for families, for cooking, for et cetera. And so all the communication that I've done here, even if it's non-commercial, links back to my space that I choose to operate in, the, the you know, the space of my relationship with my consumer, which revolves around food, around the kitchen, around you know environment whatever so somewhere there has to be some latent connect to why you are saying something even if it's a non-commercial message you have to keep it relevant uh, third part which is linked to this is don't be cliche i mean there's so much of herd mentality that happens out there everybody is going to rattle off corona statistics to you you get a hundred whatsapp messages at this point of time every guy is a walking talking expert on corona and how many people are, you know got that disease don't add to that crowd they don't need it from you okay uh, you don't have to be that meter that is publishing Corona data or some, you know, medicines or whatever for that. That's not your brand space to be in. Okay, let somebody else do that. So if you have something to say, make it different, make it count, make it impactful, or say it differently if you're saying the same thing, or keep your mouth shut. Okay, because say three things in this 50 days, and people will remember you for those three things. Say 50 things every day that everybody else is saying, and you've completely wasted that opportunity. And last point to tonality is, I think there's enough doom and gloom. Uh, you can choose to be real. You can choose to not, you know, say that, okay, it's all great. But you don't have to add to the gloom and doom around that, right? You have to create a sense of positivity. That's what people are looking for. Even in down times, even in war times, people want and gravitate to something, you know, to, the, to something that gives them a sense of positivity. You have to learn to be operate, learn to operate and be in a positive space. Um, so what's also happened that I want to understand how have you kept your brands, uh, sorry, uh, stakeholders engaged in a non-selling phase where you're not selling, but you still have to have, have a connect with them. How have you made sure that it's not a manufactured empathy, you know, it sounds real and it's not something empathy and then at the end yes. of it, a message to sell. So how have you made sure that it connects, you know, it has seen, it has the same point, you know, across. Uh, let me give you the three, four illustrations of what we've actually done. I was trying not to plug what we are doing to keep this session also as genuine as I'm claiming. But, you know, our example is what I have best to share with you, right? I think we put three or four uh, specific, you know, uh, communications out there that are separate from any of our commercial, you know, product communications at this point in time. The first one was, you know, really when the whole lockdown thing started, it was more in the space of a public service, you know, communication. You know, guys, we need to take this seriously. And it was about, you know, 
uh, just respecting our you know healthcare workers you know and therefore our need or social responsibility to stay home and we put that out as a video it was a uh, slightly somber video and a slightly not on the positive space that i would say but it was i think at that point was a need for reality reality check for a lot of our society and we just did that as a corporate messaging from a public service angle but the other three examples that i'll give you is more in our brand space not so much from a corporate space is you know again to keep it as natural and as real and as authentic to almost play on the empathy point that i spoke about and that how we are just like you right we are no different from you we are no different from our consumer we understand you we are going through the same as you are and therefore what we did is got all our you know employees and our senior people including our chairman including myself you know some of our leading uh, you know leaders of the company and people you know across the company across different functions and you know across levels and we chose men from across the company actual employees and got them to kind of be put together a video on work for home about how all the males in the company are now contributing to house work whether it's you know make somebody making a dosa somebody you know dusting his you know house somebody actually you know uh, at, you know cutting or arranging you know vegetables uh, i you know had a glimpse of myself you know ironing the clothes of my daughter etc and you know in a way that was as natural as can be everybody doing household chores which is actually what everybody in a lockdown is doing so it broke the barrier between the consumer and us and put us out there in a mode of not just empathy but understanding and being one of you and just you know it's a nicely packaged video and but having said that since it's a brand you know webinar that we're talking about it does set subtly uh, revolve around who we are we are about household appliances we are about the kitchen we are about the fan we are about the iron etc so i'm not saying that there is not a commercial purpose or not a brand no purpose somewhere woven into that that is there we would not be a marketer or brand company this would not be a, a session on brand and marketing if we did not bring in that aspect but it is not in your face it is very very subtle uh, the third example i can share with you is on the mothers day video that we put out it's just about memories and learnings from our mothers you know about how do you manage with you know cooking how do you manage with the chores of that how do you manage with the chores of utensils how do you you know in a stressed day how do you keep your wits about you how do you, you know laugh how do you cry through this how do you keep up the you know uh, 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 the you know feel good you know environment for the family etc and how all these lessons of your mother actually really help you to through in these tough times when you have to carry your family along with us right it's a beautiful you know touching emotional video out there it does occupy the space of you know kitchen or other space etc so it does revolve somewhere around the brand without actually playing the brand card uh the third example which i already touched upon earlier is you know this the online app for recipes self help cooking tips etc etc so that's just a flavor of three or four different things that we did at this point of time which kind of mirror what i spoke about earlier as to how do we engage our consumers at this point of time away from adverts for our products and you know features of our products so we also talk about uh, marketing mix taking the new color it won't be the same again you know so in your brand category how would it shape up according to what you see going around where is it going the most and where is it going the least the so first to borrow from what i said earlier is you have to go to the consumer right he is not coming to you and you have to figure out where he is and go there uh, like i said you know conventionally we are sold significantly almost 60 to 70% through physical retail trade and in all the local electrical hardware stores you know mfr multi format retails etc etc uh, that we spoke to right now you know that mix is changing there is you know we were always available online through the e-commerce platforms etc i think the share of that has gone up and will go up it has been increasing but i think that will accelerate a little more in terms of this pace of growth of online versus offline uh, and therefore we have to make sure that we are present there what we and so conventionally we had these two different you know selling buckets the online channel and the offline i'm not talking about the other channels of government sales canteen store departments institutional selling etc etc uh, what we've done interestingly over the last one month is blended all of this together and we've created our omni channel you know models hybrid models uh, we've just opened it all out you know telling the consumers you decide what you want to do you want to go to amazon and flipkart and all the other e-commerce platforms and buy us from there you want to go down to your local store buy us from there 
you want to go to your large format chromas and vijay sales and multi format retails you can buy us there which is conventional or we've en enabled all the selling channels through our platform you come and order on our site on our website and we'll find a local distributor or retailer will come and deliver the product to your house you call us up we publish numbers we'll find something to happen we also enable that for our retailers you know because our sales sales force cannot visit every retailer and store and counter like they used to we've created an app that allows them to actually you know place their orders so same facility that we offer to consumers we offer to retailers we are planning certain you know you know engagements with all the rwas residential colonies etc as to how do we you know reach out to them a couple of other things that are work in progress which i cannot share on a public platform right now but we're putting those channels to play so my larger point is we had very structured two three buckets you know of how we'd sell the channel we opened up three four more such you know channels and blended it all together made it all hybrid and almost created every permutation combination that's possible out there having done that then my philosophy is i'm neutral i'm not here to decide that e-commerce will grow faster or retail will grow faster or this will grow faster that will grow faster uh, it's the consumer who's going to make that choice when i put my marketing money is also i follow the same theory uh, people tell me digital is growing faster tv is old good for you okay i will put some money on digital i will put some money on tv i will put some money on every media out there but because digital is growing faster and tv is not will i put more money on digital no tv is yet a bigger medium i will the consumer is deciding which is a bigger medium than which is not and i am only you know loyal to the consumer whichever is the biggest medium at a point of time and gives me my best bang for my buck and for my rupee will find my rupee come to them right i am not here to have a bias as to which one makes me look cooler or which one you know trending better or not i just have to move with the times but i don't need to move ahead of the times because then i'm misaligned with the consumer so i am neutral i will move my products and my marketing money as fast and to the quantum that the consumer wants it to be that's my only you know dharma in life there's another shift uh, uh, happening which is that news channels were seen in a certain way before yes. this lockdown and now you have news channels like breaking all records as far as viewership is concerned yeah as a brand uh, head uh, do you think it is going to alter the way we perceive news channels forever now or is it a reversible thing that we might go back to where we were uh you know some of your colleagues and you know i don't know who all are listening here all of you are my friends so it's news entertainment channels i think yes there's a spur to news channels relative rating you know share of news channels rating in the genre right now i think that's natural because people want to follow the news on corona people want to follow the news on events there's new government announcements that every day people want to follow that that's number one number two you've seen a huge spur on dood darshan thanks to you know the ramayan and mahabharat and everything else that's come back uh number 3 you've seen a huge spurt in the movie channel you know genre also you've seen a spurt in the non prime time ratings because people are sitting at home through the afternoon and you have seen a drop in the gc ratings that's simply because they are not shooting new content okay i don't think you can you know extrapolate the current ratings and shares forever i think there will be a point in time when you know gcs will start shooting their you know fresh content you will have the soaps back on air and people will start watching that again uh so i think you know yes news channels you know eminence or share has gone up but we would be exaggerating that to assume and extrapolate that to being forever you know settle settling at these shares uh, i'll just leave it at that yeah um great so i think we have getting a lot of questions i think uh, we should go to some audience questions also uh let me start with one which is from julian uh, thardathil Uh, he's asking post covid would a consumer durable company such as yours pivot into products and services on safety personal hygiene and uh, preservation of life those kind of categories so let me tell you what we will do and what we will not do right what we will do and are already doing i've given an example of our fans and coolers uh, that have now created you know features of being anti germ anti bacteria etc therefore that becomes a value add functionality or feature that you know just makes my product you know fit in with the needs uh we are working on some other solutions right now that you know cater to health and well being or functionalities or features in our existing products and product categories that you know build in the enhanced need for well being okay you can do that with kitchen gadgets in very various, various ways uh that's what we are doing 
what we are also looking at is close uh, adjacency. So any product categories that are very closely aligned to what we are presenting, but borrow on existing competencies or competitive advantages that we have. Okay. Uh, what we will not do is things that we don't understand or things that we're not competitive in. For example, you know, as a socially responsible corporate, actually there was a point in time a month ago when we very, very closely looked at manufacturing ventilators because I realized that there's a supply demand gap and as a country and as a society, we need ventilators. And therefore we offered our production facilities and engineering you know, skill sets to make that happen. We did get some offers to actually set up that as a business and to run that for the future. That was not our intent. And to that, my answer was a clear no. We are not getting into the business of medical equipment just because there may be a rise in medical equipment requirements in the country. We don't understand that. That's not our competence. We will not be competitive in that. So we need to be careful as to when we diversify, what are you doing? Are you diversifying? Are you simply adding value and tweaking your products? Uh, you, the best case is to tweak your products to fit in the new requirements. The second best business case will always be to diversify into close adjacencies where we'll find competence and advantage. The worst thing for you to do is to get into something that you will completely, you know, uh, lose money on and add no value to anybody. Right. There's a question from Narayanan Ganeshan. He's asking, do you expect a revenge purchase uh, post COVID? You're going to come back out of the homes and purchase everything. I would certainly hope so. I hope people come back and start buying everything out there and get you know the economy going back again quickly. Uh, I don't know. Okay. I think there will be a some level of that. You know, there is pent up demand. People have needs. I have needs, things that I've not been able to go and buy. The last, you know, whatever 50 days, I've not been able to go have a meal. I've not been able to go you know, visit my barber. I've not been able to go, you know, uh, whatever. There's a bunch of needs, consumer needs that I've not been able to fulfill. I need to, you know, go and fulfill those needs. Uh, after that, how long will that sustain? I don't know. Uh, take the Disneyland example that I gave you from Shanghai. Disneyland is open. First day is full. It's sold out for, I think they opened out tickets. So, you know, booking for the first two weeks or three weeks, it's full to capacity. You aren't getting, you know, uh, people are not getting tickets for that, right? Uh, but the catch there is they've opened to 30% capacity. Uh, maybe if they're open to full also, maybe they'd have been full for the first two, three weeks to this revenge demand. The question is how sustainable is this? And is that going to be a U and a V or does that then become an M or an N or whatever? So that's, that stability is important. I don't know the answer to that. This question from Dr. Om Prakash Haldar, he's asking that now no direct selling or through traditional logistics is happening. Do you hire uh, likes of Amazon, SCM? What are those strategies you are adopting? I'm not fully clear on the question, but just to answer it. So yes, I mean, we've always been on these channels. We are on Amazon that he mentioned, or all other platforms. And through these platforms, you're not just present as products, but obviously we have ongoing marketing and promotional initiatives on those platforms. They've always been there. Uh, we may step some of that up. Uh, the conventional uh, sales channels are equally important to us. In a country like India, we must not forget that's yet the dominant share of trade or selling and you know revenue, you know, both from our channels, those channel partners are important to us. You know, we value the business through them and consumers do like to go to a shop and buy and we are so, you know, want to continue to service that. Uh, over the last two weeks, as we speak, actually the logistics and supply chains have opened up. Our warehouses are open, trucks are moving. Many of the stores have opened about 50% of the districts of India and we are servicing those. We are starting to see some sales happen through that. Uh, as things step up, we'll continue to service that. Uh, there's a question from Sanket Rastogi. What uh, what will change uh, in terms of pricing? Will there be some uh, offers coming for the end user as to attract them? Yes, but you know you have to understand. You have to make a strong value proposition because consumers are not feeling rich. Making a strong value proposition is not the same as dropping prices. Those are two different things. You make a value proposition that A means which of your SKUs, which products you're focusing on. There will be a certain amount of down trading. So in any category, you have products that, you know, straddle uh, entire, you know, various price points. So he'll yet come down. There will be down trading for a lot of people who will buy the lower price point product. So we'll just try and promote or plug or make that more available to meet their needs than a higher price product that he or she may have bought earlier, which doesn't mean you drop the prices of everything because 
you have to understand business is also hurting. The margins are also taking a beating. There's, they cannot go below a certain price. Uh, second, you know, there are other ways to make a value proposition where you bundle products, where you offer them some schemes, where you offer them, you know, this higher value by offering them higher quantums, etc. There are many ways to make that happen. Uh, not through price drop, but higher value to consumers. Uh, there's a question from Manus uh, Sahu. Mm -hmm. He's asking, is it a good idea to work on cash flow to increase demand by passing on the profit of uh, the product to the consumer? Uh, let me answer for our business. I don't understand every other business. In our business, we had small ticket size, you know, you know, purchase decisions. So there's no concept of me passing on cash flow. It's not even an EMI built product. You know, appliances that a couple of thousand bucks is not really very conducive for EMIs or you know, cash flow benefits. So I think values will be passed on differently from what I spoke. I think where the cash flow, you know, uh, in question really comes into play is for the whole channel. Okay. Our retailers, our distributors, our vendors. I think that's the channel that needs lubrication because on you know on liquidity and cash flow really. Uh, so as a company and as a brand, I need to make sure that I'm also catering to all of these players and they are also stakeholders. If I have to lubricate all of these players, people, and you know, make sure that they're all benefited or able to come back, that will help me get my sales back to the consumer. So that is equally important for me to service the consumer that everybody in the chain is, you know, uh, able to stand up and, you know, do business again. Um, from Atul Salvan, uh, what would be the best media to reach out to distributors and retailers for a new brand with limited budget for ad spends in current uh, pre-vaccine scenario? Pre? Okay, current pre-vaccine. That's, That's a very complicated question thrown in everything in there. Uh, I think the question is mixing up a couple of things, you know, mm -hmm. reaching out, you you know, uh, if you're talking communication to consumers, that's where your media comes into play. Okay. Uh, I do have a bias for TV as, you know, uh, or broadcast as many of, you know, against a lot of pushback from our team. But simply, like I said, I'm guided by numbers, not by any bias, really speaking, uh, as far as consumers are concerned. For a new or nascent brand, sometimes broadcast is... Uh, Hard simply because of the scale of budgets required there. Okay, therefore, digital may be a better bet, uh, and many other mediums. Uh, for reaching out to your, you know, retailers or distributors, really, you don't go through mass media. You know, if they are your distributors or retailers, a much more effective and direct communication channel that you actually can follow with them. As a company, we've been in very regular contact with them. We have a whole WhatsApp for business group, you know, activated. We have direct daily communication channels with them. Uh, what we've done is use that far more frequently in these last 50 days than we normally would and made sure that they are also engaged. We've been running contests and engagement activities for them also. Like I said, they are stakeholders. You have to handhold them. All the things that I spoke about consumers dealing with tough times holds true for all of these people also. And you have to make sure that you're feeling or keeping them as motivated as anybody else. Question from Gitanjali Bhattacharji, your thoughts on playing with gamification to your uh, millennials? Sorry, playing with? Gamification, gamification mm -hmm. to your millennial. So Ruel, this way I'm gonna go back to my first confession, uh, confession, right? I don't understand jargon, okay? Millennials, uh, gamification, it's all nice to read, nice terms. You'll see ET brand page four, et cetera, you know, throws this around all the time, et cetera. You have to simplify some of this stuff, right? I have consumers, it's a consumers in my case that's straddled across many demographics. Uh, they have different, you know, age uh, brackets that they fall in and they have different mindsets that they fall in. As a brand, I'm making sure that I remain contemporary. I remain young at heart. I am the youngest old brand in the country in my space. So we are an 80 year old brand, but we make sure we reinvent and remain contemporary. That's the message that you know, our brand team works with. Uh, as long as remaining contemporary, you have to yet remain universal, okay? If I start catering only to millennials, I think you know, on an exclusive basis, then I will you know, alienate some of my other TGs, okay? If I'm a mass or a multi, or should I say multi demo, multi age uh, brand. So I don't think we should overemphasize some of these hot terms that come our way, you have to understand who you're talking to, what your TG is, and what the breadth of that TG is, and then tailor your communication to that. Let's not get carried away by, uh, you know, over edginess and some of these things. 
On the other hand, going back to my previous organization, so a lot of what I just said for Bajaj maybe holds true for colors as a brand, right? If I'm MTV, then of course I need to talk this lingo. Of course I need to be cool. Of course I need to talk millennials. Of course I need to talk, you know, youth. Then that's a whole different lingo that one is talking. But that's not the space today that's our focus as a company brand. We have time for one last question, though. There are a lot of questions which would not, yeah. re which will remain unanswered. Uh, this is from Pushpa Anant Raman. She's asking, mm -hmm. has uh, brand loyalty taken a hit specifically in appliances, durable categories, and also in general overall you, because of this COVID lockdown? I think you'll see two ends to that answer, right? I think you will see actually greater concentration of brand loyalty, which means the the brands with, with whom you had greater connect and you know, which should typically be the top three or four brands in any category is the ones you'll end up have going back to. You know, whenever you have a problem, you go back home. You always go back to your points of anchor. You always go back to your roots. So top three or four brands in a way is your anchor points. You'll go back to that because that gives you a sense of safety and assurance. So there, I would think the loyalty scores would go up. Uh, where the loyalty scores would go down is actually to the long tail of the brands. Okay, uh, People's, you know, uh, uh, what should I say, ability or willingness to experiment goes down. People's ability or willingness to take risks go down. And therefore, people's ability or willingness to do something new goes down. Okay. They will want to latch on to something known, tried and tested. And therefore, the leading brands, the top brands will actually uh, get greater affinity or loyalty from the consumers at this point of time, provided they play their cards right and you know, meet the empathy in all of those other parameters that I told you about. And a lot of the new brands, new entrants will actually find the going that much more tough at this point of time. Thank you so much. We're out of time. Say thank you for joining us for this wonderful session. And you have totally decimated the jargons that you didn't believe in it. You had some great insights. And there are a lot of questions still unanswered, unanswered but we hope uh, we can take them next time. So thank you for joining us on this APB Presence Pitch Brand Talk virtual series. And hopefully see you next time soon. Thank you, Roel. Thank you to you and your team, to all the participants, and to my team. I didn't acknowledge them up front, but I think all I speak really is on their behalf. So thank you very much for having me.